What's up everyone? My name is Grady Alec. I'm an embedded software engineer and today I'm going to react to a video called Glitter Bomb 1.0 vs Porch Pirates by Mark Rober. Before we get started with this video, make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing and without further ado, let's get started. This guy took a package from my porch and now he's about to open it in his car but what he doesn't know is this is a custom built bait package that is recording him on four different cameras. Okay, I'm really curious to see what kind of hardware did he use to set all this up? I can see some kind of custom board there. I don't know, my guess would be like an Arduino or Raspberry Pi or something like that to, to set it up. But uh, I hope he's gonna actually talk about this. About seven months ago, I noticed a package being reported as delivered, but it never arrived. So when I checked our security cameras, I noticed this lovely couple out for a stroll. As you can see, they have backpacks on and they're just going around the neighborhood making an afternoon out of this. Well, I, I've actually never seen this happen, but I've heard it's, it's a pretty big issue. Fortunately, uh, we have like a secure place in our apartment where people can put their packages in and so on. But still, it, it would be really easy to steal these packages, right? I'm curious to see how this turns out. And then I took this to the police, and even with the video evidence, they said it's just not worth their time to look into. So then you also feel powerless. And I just felt like something needs to be done to take a stand against dishonest punks like this. And then I was like, oh, hold up. I built a dartboard that moves to get a bullseye every time. Okay, we gotta check out the dart video as well. Seems like uh, there's, there's pretty cool software running on that that would uh, actually recognize uh, where you're throwing the dart and just be able to move the board based on that. Because if you think about it, this thing has to sit on a porch all day and it can't be plugged in. And you have no idea when someone will come and pick this up. So it's not like you could just hit record on the camera and then put it in the box because you're gonna run out of battery and storage space. The really interesting thing about these uh, systems that have to be sustaining for a long time without any uh, recharge or anything like that, you just have to use minimal amount of code, just be as efficient as possible use uh, the board's low power modes if possible. A lot of development boards do have like low power modes, so taking advantage of that would be very important. On top of that, I need some way to recover this footage in case I never get the bait package back. So after six months and lots of design iterations and so much testing, here's where we landed. Wow, it took six months to do this. So I, I think that just shows the magnitude, how much time it takes to get a product out there and, and get it working and, and so on. It just takes so much time. It's not like, hey, I'm gonna go today and like in a week later, and I'm, I'm gonna have that product ready and everything's good. Product development takes a lot of time a lot of engineering efforts. This custom printed circuit board is the brains of the operation. It has a built-in accelerometer, and when it's jostled, it will check the GPS signal to see if it's been moved from the porch. And if so, it sends a signal to all the phones to wake up and start recording. That will create a very power efficient system because you don't want your cameras running 24 seven. As he said earlier, you're gonna run out of battery. You're gonna run out of memory to record that information on. So it has to have some kind of trigger that will start the recording that will do that. Otherwise, you're just gonna be running out of battery very quickly. No matter which way they open it from. And nestled in here, we've got a can of fart spray. No joke, you can clear a room. That probably smells really bad. I didn't even wanna know this. Like, it's, it's awful. Room with one spray of this stuff. So we made a cam on a small motor that sprays it five times. And not only is this just a nice touch, but we keep repeating five sprays every 30 seconds until they throw the package out of their car or house. So in order to do something like that that you can repeat over and over again, there's probably some kind of system there, some timers running that repeat a certain code over a certain period of time. So the microprocessor, whatever he's running there, I think it was an Arduino, right? The, the microprocessor has timer modules. Timer modules, we keep, keep counts of how much time has passed. Once five seconds have passed, after that, it would just trigger the fart spray again and over and over again. Otherwise, if you constantly run it over and over, like you, you might be blocking out the rest of the system of uh, being able to operate or like do recording properly and so on. So you wanna make sure you manage the time on the microprocessor properly. This increases our chances of finding it because we always know the package location at all times due to the GPS on the phones. But even if we don't recover it, all four phones have LTE data plans. So they upload the footage to the cloud so I can still see what happened. And then for the PS de resistance. That's a pretty smart move. I thought the only way they would get the footage back was to get the physical 
physical product back in, into their hands and just like download it from there. But again, there's, there's this chance, right? That what if you don't have internet connection? What if you're at a place where there's like really crappy LTE connection? And or if the battery dies on this product, you're, you're pretty much gone. Like even though there is footage, how is this footage gonna be uploaded? Is it gonna be uploaded constantly all the time? Uh, that, that's gonna take a lot of throughput, right? It's gonna take a lot of battery. So it has to have some kind of mechanism that determines how often it's gonna upload the data. So let's say after five minutes of recording, it will start uploading the data. Or if there's like no motion anymore for the box, right? It will start uploading the data. Uh, so there, there has to be some kind of mechanism so that the system would actually know when to start uploading the data. And then finally, to make it look like an actual delivered package, we added some shrink wrap and a delivery label, which is perhaps my favorite part of the whole thing. Because if the thief wasn't in such a hurry, they'd see that the package is actually coming from my childhood hero and inspiration for this project, Kevin McAllister. I, I used to watch like Home Alone videos a lot, like every Christmas. That was like a family tradition. You gotta watch Home Alone. You have to watch Home Alone. And we would watch every week Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2, Home Alone 3, and so on. It, it was amazing. And there's a charge port in the bottom because if it doesn't get stolen in a given day, I can bring it in and then recharge all the batteries in the system overnight. So the idea is the bad guy comes and takes it off your porch, then lifts the lid, and these two limit switches tell the circuit board brain inside that the lid's been removed. Okay, so there's a lot of triggering systems here, right? So we have these switches on the box. As soon as the box is lifted, it will send a signal to the microprocessor, which will determine that, okay, start the uh, motors for the glitter. So, and the motors will start and just like start spinning and throwing the glitter everywhere. So that's really cool. If you wanna do stuff like this, there's like a bunch of tutorials online on how to do this Arduino stuff, and how to work with uh, switches like this, or how to work with motors on Arduino. So you can, you can build this stuff yourself if you want to. Honestly, I don't think it would be fun to have all this glitter in your room. It's, it's probably going to be there for a very, very long time. Just getting rid of glitter just on like clothes or anything like that, it's horrible. GPS, we created a virtual geofence around my house. So I get a notification when the package has been moved off the property. So I put it out on the porch and now all that was left to do. I, I think he could build a charging port underneath the box so that when you put the box on it, it would stay charged at the instant when he picks up the package, it will be fully charged. Notification that the geofence we set up had been tripped. So then I checked the cameras and sure enough, the package is gone. So I checked the GPS and sort of tracked it. And it appears they're in a car because they seem to leave my house pretty quickly, but it seems to have stopped in a parking garage, which is where I'm headed to now. I would not go there. <laughs> like, there's some sketchy people out there. So you don't, you don't know who stole the package. Might be like a mobster or something. Probably not. Probably just like a random guy walking by and, oh, there's a package. I'm going to take it home. Oh, see some glitter. This is like recovering the black box of a crashed airplane. It would... That's so good. I just want to see the footage. Takes the package and gets in his car and eventually makes it to this parking garage where this glorious sequence unfolds. <laughs> Oh, it's the fart spray. <laughs> oh my gosh, that has to smell bad. That has to smell bad. I just hope that this guy just learned a lesson that you don't, you don't steal packages from other people. It's, it's not yours, you shouldn't be taking it. And uh, there's gonna be some crazy engineer out there who gonna build this awesome product and it's gonna mess with you. So if you're stealing packages, watch out. You might be Mark Rover's next victim. <laughs> This looks like it's 1.0. I'm assuming there's more episodes for this. So I just wanna see the upgrades that he does for this product. It's kinda of like going through engineering development process for a product and uh, seeing that live with uh, just some, some fun content and, and being able to experience that through Mark Rover. So that's, that's really cool. Props to you, Mark Rover. I, I really like this video.
So the moral of the story is, just don't take other people's stuff. I feel like at this point it's still recording, but it's just, just keep going with the fart spray. Just like keep spamming it. Like every 30 seconds. I don't know, this guy like just doesn't care about fart spray. Maybe it's not strong enough. I, I thought like the fart spray would be smelling really bad or maybe this guy just doesn't smell anything. Or perhaps even worse, this one. Go get in here like, who you had in here? Why is this clear everywhere? What did you do? Like, who you been with? Huh? Who you been with? Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing, and keep up the good work. I'll see you next time.